let's have a chat about the psychosocial development of adolescents. Now, we all, or at least some of us, have formed an I identity during our ad adolescent time. Now, identity formation, who we are, who am I, to answer that question, are primarily four different categories. First one, religious identity, what we believe in. Whether we believe in God or we believe in science. And it is this to where we start to form who we are, start to have more of a leaning towards a certain way of life, to where we will then pass this down to our children, if we choose to have them. And this, this is where it gets kind of complicated with this approach because if if the adolescent had a good relationship with their parents usually they will fall in that same faith if the ch if the adolescent doesn't have a good relationship with their parents they will usually lean towards a different religion than their parents and thus not conforming, not necessarily, into the a religion that, you know, is kind of juxtaposed upon them. The next identity formation is political identity. Parents can influence uh, what type of po political affiliation they want their adolescents to be a part of, whether they want them to be a Republican or a, a Democrat, or they want them to be pro-government or anti-government, big government, small government, the list goes on. Again, with religious identity formation, is if the, par if the adolescent has a good relationship with the parents, they will typically follow, not always, with the political identity of their parents. If they don't have a good relationship with their parents, they'll typically not follow the political identity of their parents. So let's say you have a parent that is, you know, they're really a strong conservative. You know, they, they believe in their cons con uh, conservative values, but as the adolescent grows, and matures, then say, so you know what, I. I kind of feel more this. I kind of feel more. I want, you know, government to play a larger role in my life. Uh, that's what I feel. I feel safer. I feel more secure. It's government had more of a leash, to put it mildly, on my life. The third is vocational identity, which. Vocation means occupation. What you want to do when you grow up, you know, if you want to go into the healthcare field or construction or you know, that it, it's it's more of a um, a lot of jobs are primarily influenced by social norms. You know, what are men supposed to do? What are women supposed to do? Men are perceived to being the breadwinners, right? They work hard hours, they kick butt at work, they bring the money home to the family and they have food on the table. The wife is the homemaker, makes sure the house is spotless to clean, the kids are taken care of, they're not roughhousing, and yada yada yada. Typically American culture. Now, as I've said in the past, it's been proven that women generally like to be homemakers because they feel less stressed. But hey, that's better than that time. This is about identity after all. So, this can also lead adolescents to say, you know what, I'm really passionate in this occupation. I wanna be, say, I wanna be a teacher. 
I want to teach kids. I really like teaching. I really like inspiring people. But the parents are like, eh, I want you to be a nurse. You know, I, 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 I get you want to be a teacher, but we, but I really want you to become a nurse because I am a nurse and your mom and your grandma's a nurse and you know we have all these nursing nurses in our family. Why we just want you to go after it? You know, you'll be a great nurse. You're really good at science and math. You can do it. You can do it. But then the adolescent's like, no. I want to be a teacher. You can see the uh, conflicts that could resolve in that. The fourth and final identity formation is sexual identity. This is very controversial, I know. I've seen all over YouTube how controversial this is. Now, usually this is involved. That Erickson uh, revised this term sexual identity to gender identity which is a person's self definition as a male or female now it begins with the biological sex right which leads to a gender role that society considers appropriate again very controversial topic. I love those. So, with this, you can imagine, if you feel you are a certain, you know, gender identity, but your parents say that you're, you know, you're not. You're, you're a, you're a, you're a male, or you're a female. You know, you're not. <laughs> Here we go. You're not bisexual. You're not pansexual. You know, you're not a lesbian. You're not gay. You know, you're not that. You're this, right? You're you're straight. You're a boy. You're a girl. You're not transsexual. I could go on with the hundred plus various gender. Uh, however. A gender identity is if you are male or you are female. Sexual orientation, it is what it is. But your gender identity, we've discussed, male or female, the person's self definition of those two. There's always a but, right? But a person's biological sex leads to a gender role that society considers appropriate. So if a person says that, you know, if a, if a person's born a male, and then it leads to them becoming you know, a male profession construction work or something that's you know that deals with you know upper arm strength a physical prowess again that's uh, controversial in its own right I'm not gonna go into that whole controversial thing that make this video way too long so then society then says you know what you should be a structure worker you should be Logger, you should be, you know, any other just male oriented profession. Same thing goes with females, females, you know. As as a as as a baby, the doctor identifies the baby as a female. The child then grows in the role of a female. And then society says you should be a nurse, you should be a teacher, and all of the other female occupations. Heavily female occupations, I should say. So, those are the four different identity formations.